As a member of the last Reformation, I just wanted to bring to bear something the Holy Spirit really is speaking to me, and that is the two aspects of that is we need both to go out and be disciples, that is to heal the sick and preach the gospel, but the most and most significant part of our walk in Christ is who we are in Christ, is our identity. Now what does it mean to gather? In other words, once a person is brought into saving faith, they've been water baptized, now what are they to do? Are they to go back into what something is the traditions of, that nullify the Word of God? So I thought I would cover a brief description of what it is to gather, what it is to, to come again, uh, to be a part of the body. Uh, the functioning body of Christ, as we see in the scriptures, is that they gathered in their homes. It's significant because form follows function. Uh, the function of, of each of us together is they must grow together in our faith and be rooted and grounded in Him. Uh, Colossians mentions this in uh, Colossians chapter uh, 2, uh, verse uh, 7. Uh, 6 says, As you therefore receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him, being rooted and grounded in love, <clears throat> abounding with thanksgiving. And then it says, Beware, lest any man spoil you through the uh, philosophy and vain deceit, after traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. So we need to be uh, beware lest any man spoil us. So we can be spoiled after the rudiments of the world, traditions of men, and the uh, traditions of men and, and uh, the rudiments of the world. So we should be pointing people back to just gathering in our homes. That's where the disciples all came together. That's where, he, where Paul preached, wherever he would go from house to house, as we read in Acts chapter 20. And he established them in their faith. The Hebrews chapter 6 talks about the six fundamental things of the faith, and that is the repentance from dead works. In fact, he says, uh, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, uh, faith towards God, doctrines of baptisms, laying on of hand, resurrection from the dead, and eternal judgment. Six things. Now, that's just the foundation. So, it's to gather, we come together, we're dealing with kingdom issues in our lives. It's not a show but rather we're building relationships, we're listening to the Holy Spirit individually and collectively. In Corinthians 14, verse 26, brother, how is it when you come together, every one of you has a psalm, a tongue, revelation, a doctrine, interpretation. Let it all be done unto edifying. Uh, the prophets may prophesy one at a time, and the others are judging. Now, for 23 years, I never even did that. I didn't have any idea what it was to gather and let Jesus Christ be preeminent and lead us collectively, because that's, I, was, I was being spoiled, just as you have been spoiled or are being spoiled by the rudiments of the world, the traditions of men. The traditions of men that nullify the Word of God. And we're to beware lest these things spoil us. Whether it be a philosophy, an idea, a, uh, we, we are to gr be rooted and grounded in the Scriptures, that the Spirit of Christ within you, disclosing the Scriptures to you, Luke chapter 24, Jesus opened their understanding that they may understand the Scriptures. And the, really the purpose of any brother or sister is to mature each of us, to bring each of us up to a, the stature that belongs to Jesus Christ. Uh, in Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verse, sorry, chapter 4, verse 21, uh, we read, If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. the measure of every part, just like a, a cup has a measurement. The, the degree that Christ is in you, in maturity and in giftings, is what you can minister to others. And that's the idea of exercising ourselves again. And the Hebrew writer speaks about this. He says, you know, by, by now you ought to be teachers in Hebrews chapter 5. He says, but some need to teach you once again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have need of milk and not of meat. For meat are those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both uh, good and evil. But what the Holy Spirit is being suppressed today, for over, uh, today, as well as for hundreds and hundreds of years of man-made traditions that nullify. Instead of having an open dialogue where people can speak and, and uh, relate and the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is given to every man, as we read in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7, instead of that, it's suppressed where we go to one person who's, di who's, who's monologuing some sermon 
and as a result the Holy Spirit in the body is being suppressed. The Holy Spirit in the body is being quenched. The giftings in one another. That's a tradition of men that spoil you. What other traditions that spoil you? The idea of financial accountability that you have to give 10% of your money to God. Uh, that's an Old Testament command that has been nullified a long time ago uh, as a result of the Old Testament commands. And we are now in the New Covenant whereby, uh, first of all, uh, we don't have a building to maintain because each of us are living stones and Christ Himself in us. We're the, we are the building. We don't go to a building. We don't go to church because we are the church. And what does a church do? The ecclesia. That's what that word means, called out ones. So the ecclesia are those who've been called out of the world unto God to function together with issues of their lives of the kingdom of God. But everywhere we see in every corner, just about, is we have these buildings that people call churches, and they're not churches whatsoever. When you go inside, we just have a monologue with one person. Again, the Holy Spirit is being uh, grieved, and the giftings are being quenched in everyone because it's not allowed to function. But we see that the, that's just the opposite of what we ought to see, what, we, what you are supposed to see. So the last reformation is that, we're, yes, we're healing the sick, we're preaching the gospel, but, but then we're bringing into a fellowship, koinonia, with the Father, with the Son, and one another. You see that? So the one anothering aspect of the Bible, teach, and, teach one another in Psalms and hymns, Colossians chapter 3, let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another. So Christ Himself is the living Word, which is John refers to in 1 John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Christ Himself is the living Word. And He's given to us by virtue of His Holy Spirit the Scriptures of Truth. And He, the Spirit of God, which is Christ, discloses, reveals Himself as regard to, his, to his, that which is written in times past through His holy apostles and prophets. And the Bible says that the church is built upon, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20, the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone and that speaks about the building. It all fit together uh, for, that we may be a habitation of God. So God is a place where God dwells in. These new converts that are coming as a result of your and my efforts of our going out to preach the gospel, heal the sick, we need to bring them into a fellowship, you see. They can't just go back out into the street and into the world, into these buildings that suppress and nullify the Word of God uh, through their philosophy, through their vain deceit, after traditions of men. Uh, and, and as I hear all the advertisement everywhere, all of the places, that people are advertising themselves, they're advertising their name. Uh, go to Harvest ba Bible chapter. If you haven't got some, come, come to our. And what do they do? They sit there and you watch the show. You listen to the sermon. You go away and say, oh, gee, that was a chilly challenge. But what I've seen today more and more is people are sick and tired of sitting in their chairs, sick and tired of listening to a monologue. They're sick and tired of it. And now we need, not just because of sick and tired of it, with the Holy Spirit in them is crying out for expression. The Holy Spirit in them is crying out for His life to be flown and to be realized and, 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 and uh, um, expressed to one another. So this is the Reformation. This is the last of the Ref Reformation that we need, brothers and sisters, is that this aspect of us coming together under Christ in our homes, having a common meal together called the Lord's Supper, where it's a meal, it wasn't a cracker and a snack, but rather it was the Lord's Supper, it was a feast. We can read that 1 Corinthians 11, that they were abusing it. They were saying that some were coming and they were getting drunk at it, and others were going away hungry. And Paul says in chapter, th uh, verse, uh, chapter 11, verse 33, he says, when you come together, wait for one another, if you're hungry, eat at home, and when you come together to eat, rather, he says, when you come together to eat. So we have a Lord's Supper, we have a meal together, it's a feast, it's a memorial of what Jesus was doing with his 12 disciples before he was crucified. And then we come together with a common cup and, and, of course, the bread. And that is our Lord's Supper. And the giftings of God are distributed amongst us according to whatever God has given to us. And as we exercise those giftings, whether it be amongst ourselves or whether it be out in the streets, we are exercising ourselves as a result of God's giftings in us, and we, are, we see the benefit of it. Just like going on the streets and praying for people who are in need of healing, we see the benefit of it. But now, again, I'm trying to stress that, that in the last reformation is the aspect, the second aspect, and that is coming together that we might grow together as a people in our homes, functioning according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, Ephesians 4.16, make the increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. So we no longer being tossed to and fro. And the Bible says, what about apostle, prophet, and pastor, pastor gift? Uh, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor. Are, these are giftings, Ephesians 4.11. God's giving gifts to the church. For the threefold thing, to perfect to saints, the work of ministry, and to edify. So to perfect is to make, to mature. 
So these are giftings given to the church. There's no hierarchy, you see. It's rather just we're just a common brotherhood with dif distinctions of giftings. And we recognize the giftings of one another. And now we're starting to grow as, uh, uh, in our faith. And so we need to teach people the Word of God. We need to uh, clothe ourselves with the truth of the Scriptures. And we need to grow in our, gra in our faith. And the Peter says in 2 Peter chapter 2, verses, uh, verse 2, he says that grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as His divine power hath given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who has called us to glory and virtue. Notice that by these you become partaker of a divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. Wherefore, add unto your faith, what? Virtue, knowledge, knowledge that's rooted in experience, uh, temperance, patience, to patience, godliness, godliness, brotherly kindness, and the brotherly kindness love. For, the third, for these are in you and abounding, you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, brethren, I press that we would be like James, who is not merely a hearer of the word, but a doer only, deceiving ourselves. In other words, if, I, if this, the, these things which I'm saying, and you don't do it, James says, uh, you're just deceiving yourself. If we're not doing it, we need to go out and reach the lost. We need to be a people gathering in our homes under Christ Jesus. It has nothing to do with these big buildings. These big buildings will just watch the show and, and, and think that that's ministry. It's not ministry. It's just performance. It's a performance whereby the Holy Spirit, and if it's not even an ecclesia, a biblical ecclesia, it's the traditions of men that nullify the Word of God. It's that which has been going on for hundreds of years, and now this is the last Reformation. This is the time of change whereby we can now once again hear the voice of the Spirit collectively and, and let the filtering of the Holy Spirit through the Scriptures of Truth, that we might have a mind that is renewed and washed, that we may walk as holy people. And uh, other things that Torben talked about with regards to being saints, that we are saints, that we are His workmanship, Ephesians chapter 2, verse uh, 10, that we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus. We are holy people, sanctified unto Him. Does that mean we never sin? We ought not to ever sin, uh, but there is a provision just as much as if we did, if we do. If we do. And the scripture says, well, I sin all the time. Well, the Bible gives us provisions that we might not. Just like the fact that God has given us provisions for the sinner, that he might be cleansed of his, all his past sins and be brought into right relationship through the blood of Jesus Christ by faith. That's a provision. It's made available to whoever will. Well, there's a provision for us as well. Not only that we confess our sins because he is faithful and just, but also to abide in him and let the Holy Spirit's work in us de be deeply rooted in us and not be uprooted. Have our purposes in, in, uh, grounded in Christ and that our life is centered around Him, His Word, Himself, Him, everything about Him. And that as you do that, the Holy Spirit will open up under our understanding greater and greater realities of the Spirit of God. And uh, I trust that uh, each of us can be um, called into deeper and deeper waters of the Spirit of truth. And that, that Spirit, it's until uh, we see it in Ezekiel, where we see the temple, Ezekiel saw that temple and there was a river that was flowing from it. And he started walking in it up to his ankles first, and then to his thighs, and then he was swimming in it. Notice the degrees, ankles, thighs, swimming. We want to be able to immerse ourselves in all the, uh, all the revelation that God has given to us of who we are as an identity, as the new creation, 2 uh, Corinthians 5.17 speaks of, a new creation in Jesus Christ. And wherever Paul went to, he was preaching not only Christ Jesus crucified, but he was also preaching Christ in you. It's one thing to know the Holy Spirit as far as historical, what Christ has done historical, but what about the, what is, what is Christ doing in you? What has God done in you? Has He transformed? Now we understand that transformation starts in salvation and that there's an ongoing change as far as our character is concerned. But with regards to the fullness of Jesus Christ, each of us can be, can be full to the measure that we ourselves have. And when God fills the cup, it may be just small. What do you think God does after that? It may overflow. It just doesn't. He enlarges the cup for a larger capacity of Jesus Christ in us, and again, He fills it and overflows. And that, is, that, is the, that should be our experience, going from faith into faith and from glory to glory. And when the God of glory comes, this is, this is so important, the God of glory manifesting Himself amongst us, and we taste of the glory of God as we see, as we read in 2 Corinthians 4, that the glory of God is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. And we have a treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and none of us. So the excellence of this power may be of God. And brother, we need one another. The body needs each other. And because of this whole uh, uh, diatrophies characteristics where men are, are, are told to lead because they want to be preeminent, uh, instead of the one-man show where Christ himself is no longer actually directing the member himself, but a man is by virtue of his position, by virtue of his, his actual, what he's doing, functioning, 
and the body lay suppressed, and the body is uh, the Holy Spirit is grieved. Uh, instead of that, now we need to call the young converts to the biblical ecclesia, whereby we are loving one another, teaching one another, growing in our faith and, ex and expression of Jesus Christ. Yes, we're growing in understanding, but also we're growing in our expression of the d dynamic. And as a young ch as a young convert, they can quickly and and, and uh, accelerate their growth by virtue of the open participatory gatherings. In chapter 14 of 1 Corinthians, verse 33, 37, it says, Brother, if there be any of you who are spiritual, who think themselves to be a prophet, let them acknowledge that which I write are the commandments of the Lord. So these are commandments. These are not options. And then it says in the next verse 38, If any man is ignorant, well, he's just ignorant. Other verses says, you know, he's not to be listened to. We don't listen to a person who's ignorant. And I'm sorry to say that a large, per a large percentage of so-called ministries and ministers today are very ignorant. They're very ignorant of the preeminence of Jesus Christ. They're very ignorant of the biblical ecclesia. They preach only themselves. They preach tithing. They preach, uh, you know, uh, sitting and listening to a monologue and that you get part of the program. It's all a program. It's not life-giving. It's not active. It's not real in your own personal life. And so I praise God for the last Reformation. I praise God for Brother Torben. I praise God for you, Brian, brethren and sisters, that you yourselves are growing up in this capacity of Jesus Christ. We're all beginning to understand what it is to be a body, to be a functioning body, loving one another, uh, uh, recognizing our giftings, hearing the voice of Jesus individually, as I mentioned in Ephesians uh, 4.21, and that we are uh, collectively wanting to go out and make a difference and to turn the world upside down. That's what the apostles, that was, it, that's what was said of those who came to Troas. Those who have turned the world have come up, upside down and come here also. Let us turn the world upside down. Uh, many years ago, back in 1979, the Lord told me that He would use me in such a way that it would affect the entire world. At that time, I thought, okay, what's, what's all this, Lord? Um, not really understanding really anything and going through many deep waters of my life, seeing nothing ever happening, nothing of any significance at all. But more recently, uh, as I, God has stirred my, my heart and as God is being able to help me to see that, that the Reformation, that this Reformation, that the replacement, the last great exodus, have you, uh, if you please, of coming out of the man-made traditions, man-made structures, man-made organizations, man-made buildings, ordinances of the Old Testament, and coming back to the vitality of our life as a brotherhood, as our life together, listening to the Holy Spirit, walking by faith, overcoming the world, overcoming sin, and being a dynamic for the Holy Spirit in our generation that we might see His will come and His, word, uh, His, will, His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I said to a brother once in regards to um, the God's dynamic, is what He really wants. Ephesians, uh, Jeremiah chapter 18, uh, four things. If you read Jeremiah chapter 18 where Jeremiah was told to go and get a, um, a girdle and to put it on himself and then later on he was told to, to bury it in the Euphrates and then Later he came back and he, he dug it out and he, the Lord said to Jeremiah, as this girdle is good for nothing, right, and that um, uh, is good for nothing and I shall, I shall mar the pride of Jerusalem and, and Judea. But then he goes on as an, in an expectation of saying, as a girdle clings to the loins of a man, so have I caused to cling unto me, the whole house of Israel, that they might be unto me a, a people a name, a praise, and a glory. Isn't that wonderful? A people, that we might be a people of God. A praise, that we might be a praise of God. A name, a name uh, that's not given as a denominational or man-centered anything, but rather the name of Christ, the, the name of every name. And then a glory, the glory of God, that we may experience the, un, the hand of Jesus Christ and the glory of God. So this is the a second aspect of the last reformation that I believe God is calling us, that you and by the Holy Spirit as I speak are witnessing and speaking to you because you have God, Christ in you, and Christ is witnessing the truth to your heart. And this will go as a mighty ocean, it shall go right around the world. These are the things that God has shown me. It shall go right around the world. It shall undo heavy burdens. It shall break the yoke of, the, of those who are bound. And it shall set the captive free. Hallelujah. As he 